What I want to talk about today is the mystery of and the importance of empty space, the vacuum, the void, nothingness. Of course, uh, philosophers have discussed and thought about nothingness for millennia. Um, what's kind of surprising is that modern physics has a lot to say about this subject. And in fact, what's also surprising is how important this subject has become. This is a uh, picture of the Keck Observatory on top of an extinct volcano, Mauna Kea, in Hawaii. In this observatory, astronomers are measuring the tiny flashes of light from distant supernovas, supernovas billions of light years away. And what they're trying to do is understand the vacuum, what happens in the vacuum here. Here's a picture of, of the CERN particle accelerator near Geneva, Switzerland. That's a 15-mile-long underground tunnel there. And what the uh, particle experimentalists are trying to do here is to create tiny ripples in space-time called Higgs bosons. And the purpose is the same, to understand what's happening in empty space. So both those group of scientists have similar goals. They are testing predictions of some absolutely bizarre theories of how what happens in the vacuum. Okay? Uh, Superstring theory, particle physics, cosmology, astrophysics, these may seem like separate subjects. But in fact, the current uh, theories have forced those um, theories together. And if you want to understand um, stand these things, you have to work on both the smallest scales, like we hear the particle accelerator um, experimentalists do, and the largest scales. So that's what I want to talk about today. And let me start by talking about particle physics on the smallest possible scales. Okay. One way of looking at what the goal of particle physics is, is to understand what the most um, fundamental building blocks of nature are. That's what they kind of do. And over the years, the method has stayed the same. What you do is you take something and you smash it as hard as you can, and you see what it's made out of. Okay? So starting here, you start with like a block of ice, and you smash it, and what you're going to get is water molecules. Okay? No matter how hard you hit that with a sledgehammer, you're just going to get water. So you'd say, OK, ice is made of water. But in fact, if you then take those water molecules and you take some other instrument and smash them even harder, you'll find that they break up into hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And so you say, OK, that's the most fundamental thing, atoms. And this has been very successful for hundreds of years, in fact. And in fact, all of the elements, everything we see in, on the world, in the world, are made of the 92 elements of the periodic table. So in one sense, we could stop here and say, OK, we're done, right? Everything is made of atoms. Okay? But that's not really true. Because if you go back to the atoms and you smash them even harder with a more powerful smasher, okay, they break up into protons, neutrons, and electrons. And in fact, we now know that everything in this room is actually made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. That seems like a very simple place. So maybe we should stop there. It'd be nice to stop there, but unfortunately, or fortunately, if you take your protons or your neutrons, these are neutrons, and you smash them together even harder, and you need, the sm you need more and more powerful smashers to do that. That particle accelerator I showed you in the slide is the world's most powerful smasher. Okay? What you find is that the protons and neutrons are made of quarks, up and down quarks. Okay? So this, is, this goes on, and that's how far we've got. So the question is, can you understand the most basic building blocks? And I'm not going to review all of particle physics, but to suffice it to say that after decades now of smashing and theorizing and synthesizing, we, we are now in the position of having the standard model of particle physics. In other words, we have figured out what the most basic elements of matter are, given the level of smashing that we can do. And, and this is it. It's a, it's a very successful theory. It consists of some fundamental uh, particles, quarks, up and down quarks, and leptons, like electrons and neutrinos. They come in a mysterious triplicate of three generations. No one knows why exactly, though we'll get to that at the end. Um, it's a quantum field theory. Okay? And the quantum field theory has symmetries in it that tell how to combine these together to make protons and neutrons and everything else we know. Those same symmetries associate with different force particles. The photon is the force of electromagnetic. We have strong forces. Those same symmetries say how these things interact and build everything else out. It's a very complicated theory. It um, has lots of math. But with this theory, you can make thousands of predictions. And thousands of experiments have been done testing it. And in every case, the theory agrees with experiment. So whether you like it or not, this 
standard model of particle physics is the best description we have of nature, and it works.